Hello and welcome to my let's play of Seventh Continent in Tabletop Simulator. I own the uh, physical game of Seventh Continent. It's pretty fun, but I uh, figured I'd record it and it's a lot easier to record in uh, in Tabletop Simulator on a PC. So I uh, found the full full version of this game. Um, it is not public. Um, I'm not going to, of course, share a link. It's not on the Steam Workshop. There is a demo of the base of a, of a small version of the game on the Steam Workshop, but this is the full um, base game. It does not include the expansion packs, however. So anyways, I started with that, and then I tweaked it a bit to my liking. I uh, took all the, all the cards, spread them out on the table, so I don't have to go searching through um, these kind of uh, bags. Because searching through the bags didn't uh, didn't really work out for me. Because if you go search, all the cards are facing facing you, so you kind of get a ton of spoilers if you actually look at it. So you can flip them around by pushing F, but then you got to press F all the time, and it constantly resets. So if you go back to search, you can see they're all flipped again. Anyway, I couldn't figure it out, so um, I just laid them all on the table. The other nice thing about laying them on the table is I can select them all and hit R to, to randomize the different piles. And I can see, oh, if I need to draw, you know, a, a card from here, this is already a randomized pile. I'm not gonna go over the rules of this game. There's a ton of videos on YouTube about the rules of this game. Um, this is the manual here if I need to refer to it. Just as, uh, just a PDF printed out in little images. And then this is probably the most important part of the, of the rules, which is kind of your stat guide of how many cards it's needed to uh, to get the various successes. I, of course, will be playing solo um, this game. I'm only going to be playing one player, so this game has uh, four slots, so I'm just going to quickly delete the four, the other slots, and then we'll bump it down to a one-player game, and then you just change this guy to a, to a one, and therefore you get this, this setup right here, which is four four items, four green things in your hand, and five blue things in your hand, skills or whatever. And let's see what else to do. So I gotta pick a dude, I gotta go through the setup. Let's look at the setup, which is here. So choose a character card, add it to your hand, and remember to read the backstory in the back. Each player takes their character figure and one fire figure. So I've played this game for about an hour um, on the starter quest. So I know a little of the basics. Um, let's see, I was thinking I'm gonna go with Victor Frankenstein. Let's go look in here and pull out the characters. And take a look at what uh, Mr. Frankenstein's doing for us. You have a monster card, you may just you may apply the following effects. Alright, we're gonna play as Victor Frankenstein. So pull him out. Let's see, we need the clues. Let's see, we'll need the curse. We're gonna play this goddess one, because that is the um, recommended starter quest which I still haven't solved. Pull out the character card for Frankenstein. These are the character skills. And here's the basic skills. And the four curses. All right, so let me make sure I do all this correctly. So, 35 skill cards, five skill cards for the adventure. One curse card associated with the curse, with the clue you have selected, and then four curse cards. So I also need the clue card, which is in here. And there's our clue card. All 
All right, so there's the five curses. Because I did not pick up the pile. All right, so there's our 35. 35 generic skills. Five Pacific skills to Frankenstein. And then we'll grab his token. Put him somewhere there and grab a fire token. Put it over here. Let's see, how do you multi grab in this dumb game? Okay, there's our four dice. So let's build items later. Okay, we'll just stack all these. Okay, there's our deck. So push R a couple times for extra random. Put it on the action deck slot. We'll read our character card in a second. And read our clue in a second. Let's see what else I gotta do in, a, do in this setup. Do, do, do. Okay, we took the fire figure. So you can optionally play on easy mode or hardcore mode by taking these, either of these two cards. I'm not gonna do that, I'm gonna play on normal. Um. Each player takes the number of dice. Got that. Choose one or more clues. I'm just going to play with one clue. Recommend you play with the oh, Voracarius Goddess as your first game. <coughs> we shuffle the deck. Okay. We have all that. Okay, we have that. And we will do all that. And then it says, read out the introduction text, page two, as well as the clue, front and back. All right, well, first we'll read the character. Victor Frankenstein. Victor, once a young promising doctor, has been a fugitive for the past several years. Rumors run rampant as to why he was expelled from the medical profession but his colleagues and authorities refused to talk about it. Some mention strange experiments in the catacombs of his university in Zurich, while others claim he is obsessed with finding the primal essence of life. Did he join the expedition to escape the European police, or to find a sanctuary of freedom to perform his experiments? All right. Maximum number of blue cards you, you may hold in your hand is increased by one. You may discard one card with the keyword will in order to choose one character specific blue card from the discard pile and add it to your hand. Hmm. So every time you get a will, you can add your own card. And then this is a standard thing that just says you can move um, cheaper to fire or another explorer, but I'm only playing with a single explorer, so it doesn't really matter except if I make fire. All right, so here's our clue. Let me read actually number two first. Page two. Read this. It's 1907. A renowned explorer, you have just come back from the first expedition of the seventh continent, a mysterious land that was recently discovered off the coast of Antarctica and probably the very last terra incognita in the world. You were recovering from your adventure when, whilst reading the daily newspaper, you realized that several other members of the expedition have disappeared suddenly for unknown reasons. Coincidentally, you have been lethargic for a few days, feeling feverish and finding it difficult to get up from bed. A cold shiver runs up and down your spine. You have to face facts, and evil is consuming you within. At nightfall, you fall into a restless sleep without knowing that, for you, this is only the beginning. It's kind of funny how you've already been there, and then you came back, and then you got cursed, and now you're going back. I don't know. It's very complicated. <laughs> All right, so the, the curse that we have is this one. The Vicarious Goddess. Since you returned from that expedition, the vig vision of a strange, gloomy idol that seems to be calling you has haunted your nights. The piercing cries of a few seagulls pull you 
out of a deep slumber. They sound so strange as though they were laughing. You try your best to understand. Where on earth are you? How did you end up in this place? Your memories are clouded and you seem unable to remember. While sifting through your journal, you come across a handwritten sheet upon which something that looks like a route has been drawn along with several st statues. As it so happens, one of the statues looks exactly like the idol from your restless dreams. Begin adventure by putting number 10 on the play. Each player places their figure on it. And it's just... I think you can zoom somehow with an M. It's not a very good zoom, is it? Oh, yeah, I can scroll out. Look at that. FT16. It's like a map. All right. Let's see. What else do I have to do? Anything? Let's see. I got these cards. These are all my expression cards. I'm going to drag this pile closer so I don't have to go hunting for it. Put that right there. It's fine. It's like this crazy grid. And then I need to go grab number 10. Number 10 is up here somewhere. There's only one number 10, right? Yep. All right. Thick columns of yellowish smoke rise up from the cracks in the volcanic rock to the east. Peaks of a rocky cliff look down, mocking the ocean below. Let's put our dude on that, and then we'll put fog everywhere it says to put fog. All right. And that's it. That's the start of the game. I shall save that. Oh, and by the way, if you want to listen to music while you um, watch this Let's Play, you can check out this link for music from the game. I'm not going to include it because it's uh, copyrighted. So anyway. I don't think I'm forgetting anything else. Let's put this crap back. Put this clue in there. Alright, and these are the advanced skills which we don't need to mess with yet. And I think that's it. In terms of setup. Alright. So let's check out this one. We'll need one action card or one uh, what is it? action, one action and zero success to explore to explore what that is. All right, so it's a mad scientist. We'll put that in our hand. The following effects apply when this is in your hand. Move our clue over here into our satchel. So if I'm repairing or if I'm, what is that, thinking? What is that crazy symbol? There's all kinds of crazy symbols in this game. Yeah, think or compose looks like. Then I get some bonuses. Alright, so that's done. I'm going to take a chip, by the way, to indicate what the hell I'm doing, because I always get sometimes lost of, like, what the heck was I doing when I was uh, drawing all these cards and thinking about it. Alright, so that is done. Now I draw five, which is this one. Read 
the back. You stand before a nearly 50 foot high rocky peak. The view from up there must be quite interesting. <coughs> so we can climb by drawing at least one action and need it to success. But if we, uh, if we fail, we fall. So it's probably not a good idea yet. Let's, we can flip this for no car draw, no success. Let's do that. Hot stuff. There are a few more rolls between you and your destination. You notice the most numerous ones spurt their gases less frequently. Take 45 card and apply consequence A if you decide to walk in the yellow holes, or consequence B if you decide to walk in the white holes. Well, since this one is spewing and this one's spewing, I'm just going to go on the white white holes, because they seems like the white holes have less spew on them. So 45. Doo, doo, doo. Here's 45. You pause, watching the pattern of vented steam, trying to time your run. You dash towards the... Okay, we're going to do B. And then we'll rotate this. White ring holes. The scalding steam does not shoot you from the ground again until you are well clear. Take card number three. Okay, an experience from your previous expedition comes to mind. Daniel M., the team's anthropologist, taught you... I'm not putting them in the right place. I'm just like putting them randomly. Um, taught you that the prehistoric man's wisdom teeth were designed to replace their molars as they eroded by the intense chewing of raw meat. One experience point. Nice. That's a satchel item. So put that over there. All right, so this crap goes away. And I think this just goes into the past, if I'm not mistaken, because it says here, it's an area where all adventure and exploration cards are discarded. You may freely look in the past and must be returned to the original respective decks between two game sessions. All players use the same past. So I think everything just goes in the past. Anyway, now that I've done that, this guard goes to number nine. So here's nine. The ground is totally barren here. In fact, the only vegetation among your surroundings are clumps of red seaweed clinging to the rocks. Pumes of yellowish smoke spurt from the ground from time to time, swirling around a dead seagull. All right. Let's flip this one, too, over here. Spiky conch. You have picked up a large conch that you can blow into. So if you're fighting, you can get a success. And if you're playing music, you can get some other crazy goo. All right, so that's an item. So that goes here. And we put a dice on it. And we set the state to three. It's got three uses. Oops, I should guess I should lock this thing, huh? Oh, this is gonna go crazy. All right, toggles lock. Just gonna make it light up. Come on, dice, you can do it. All right. Perfect. These cards over here, I don't know. Whatever, it doesn't really matter, I suppose. All right, so now I revealed number seven. Further to north, to the north, the terrain slopes steadily down to the water. All right. Let's head to the north, then. In order to head to the north, we need to draw one action card. 
So we are we are doing this right now. Remember, if you're going to think, you can think and choose one card from the discard pile and add it to your hand and discard this. There's nothing discarded yet, so no reason to do that. All right, so that passed, so I'm going to go here. All right. So now I can look at this thing, which is probably a dead body, or look up here. The number 18. Let's draw a card for to see what's up number 18. Curse. Don't want that in my hand and can't get that in my hand, so nothing happens. Curses are technically actually not bad to draw. As long as you don't draw them from your discard pile when your action deck's empty, you're fine. Okay, so now I get 18. You have reached the northern end of the island. You have no idea how much time it would take to reach an area with more abundant resources, but one thing's for certain, if you stay at the bot the stay on this barren slab of rock, you're bound to starve. The many reefs that surround the island would love to surely wreck any craft trying to approach or leave. However, you might be able to swim through them. The sea is calm right now, but this is not a time to be reckless. So everybody, if you're going to swim, you need to draw three action cards and have two successes. And if you don't do that, then you can't yet you turn back and probably get hurt. All right, so I'm not going to do that. So let's take a look at this body, which is the 110, and we don't have to do anything to take a look at it. So it's 11. If there's a something under your satchel card, you might do this. All right, so we're not gonna do that. A man is lying down among the rocks, lying face down among the rocks. Approaching closer, you notice his clothes are torn and tattered, and his body is swollen and puffy. Parts of the body are mutilated, and the man's skin bulges with what looks like large eggs. Take a look at this for one action, no success. Take a 31 and return this. All right, let's do that. Let's take a look at these eggs. So we need to draw one of these. And we get a bow. Nice. Um, we have to craft it. It's just a still, it's not an item. It's a craftable thing. All right, so we are, we're still here. And now we return this. I wonder when it says return this. Do I return it to the past or do I return it to the deck? I don't know. That is weird. But anyways, here, that's 11. And then it said to draw 31. And there were two thirty ones, so hopefully I got the good one. Oh good, I did get the good one. <laughs> I've seen the other one before. Alright, the waves violently pound the rocks, splashing your face with sea spray. You inch towards the body along the slippery rocks, trying trying your best not to fall into the water. You manage to keep your balance if you draw one card and get three successes. Otherwise you take you get hurt. So I need to get three successes, and let's see what else can I do with a balance. I could build this this card, the bow. I would need wood. Do I have any wood anywhere? I think everything has flint. This does have no resources. These places have flint. So I would need to draw three cards to build the bow. It's got four uses, which is pretty good. That's a will card. 
This is aggressive music. And that's a pretty good way to fight too, if I get into combat. Let's do that before I forget about it. So I'm going to try to build this thing. I need just to take three cards, really. Because I don't have access to any other resources. One, two, three. And I get to choose one. You may discard this during the result step of an action you were involved in in order to gain the following effect. Gain an automatic success. That's pretty sweet. I think add one of the one skill to your deck of the next five blowpipe that's not useful because it because how much how many oft, how often are you doing archery or shooting so I think I want this one that's pretty good and let's see my hand limit is supposed to be Five, but this guy also has another one, so he has six. So I can fill up all these. So these go back to the discard pile. And this is created as an item. Let me set him to four. All right. So we still got to do this balance crap. All right, so I need one. So I have one card that will give me success there. I can remember a card. I don't think anything in here is worth remembering. Nope, not yet. Oh, I didn't put up the fog of war for these places. All right. Let's see. So I neither need two or three stars. So if I want three stars, I pretty much need to draw five cards. If I want two stars, three should do it. Maybe I should draw four, and then I might get lucky and not have to use my skill. So I'll draw four. Okay, that's one, two, and here's a third. By using that, so you have to make the stars. See, I made the star there. And then there, I made a star here. All right, so I use that, and that goes away. And that's a success. So first, I need to pick one of these. So the rope is pretty sweet. I could climb. That would help me climb that uh, mountain, which is pretty good, I think. And help me make fire and so on. So let's take that, I think. Let me look at the other ones real quick. Learn by doing. During the cost of an action, you may not, uh, I could, I could remember that one. That might be good. You may discard this if you're involved in, during an action, to apply negative two or a seven. That one's dumb. Knowledge of power gives me an experience point, essentially, if I think and I happen to get a star. So it's kind of a random bet. So I'm going to take the rope and I'll put this one right there. Take the rope and then soon I'll remember. I need to do this action though first. All right, so this was a success. Take 32 from the adventure deck if available, discard this and replace it with a 139. 32.
and replace that with a 139. 100's over here. What's this one? Metal gear wheel. A metal gear gear wheel found on the body of a naval officer. Plus six gear. Nice. Put that over there. I'm sure we'll need that soon. Judging by the insignias on this jacket, the man was once a French, French naval officer. Despite being worn and faded, you can still make out a name. FT-16 La Roche. Probably, probably the ship which the man was assigned. Unfortunately, there's nothing else worthwhile on him. FT-16 is on as a clue on the on the map. So FT-16 is close. So it's got like a little squiggle, like right there. So this is the mountains we are in, and I'm right here right now. So I need to go over this way for FT-16, and then go north. All right, making progress. Okay, but first, let's remember. This is a think for nothing. And we're going to choose something from the discard pile and add it to your hand and discard this one. We're going to get this Learn by Doing card. I remember this Learn by Doing card. Done. And then now this can give me a negative three to, uh, to do something. And then if I want to craft this rope, um, during the cost step, how does this craziness work? So all items cost. Determine the cost. Yeah, it just says you can just minus stuff from the cost. So I can basically use this this learn by doing and craft this rope for free. And if I had rope available, it would be minus three to uh, to make rope. But this train does not have rope, so I'm gonna craft the rope. And I'm going to use the Learn by Doing card, discard it. And now we have rope. All right, so we got aggressive will and skill. All right. So all that stuff's exhausted. So let's move down here for one at one action. Think. Randomly take seven and draw one. Okay. Well, I might do that later. Let's see, we might as well climb. So to climb, we need to draw one and get two successes. And if we use our rope, then we will have one success. Yeah, so it doesn't take, it doesn't take anything to draw and we'll get one success, but not two. So we need to at least get one star on this. We need to get one star. So to get one star, let's draw two cards. All right, so first we need to use the rope. Take it down to three. And draw two cards. And then hopefully one of those is a success. Should be pretty guaranteed. And we can either get a lucky number seven or a star. Oh, good, we got a star. Got two stars, even. Let's see. Walking stick. 
is a will. So that's over here. So that would give us an ability for fighting is cheaper. This is aggressiveness, which is the conch. It's not clear when there's like the conch says discard this and you combine like how that stuff works. That was always weird to me. Combining an item. It is not allowed to let's see. Player Miller relinquish an item dies moved. Can't just deconstruct an item voluntarily by discarding one card for an item that is made up of multiple cards unless it is part of the effect of the item card. For example, bolus or discarded after use. So it's almost like if I use the conch for attacking, if I combine this walking stick, or sorry, this, this club, and the conch, which are both aggressiveness, then I'll have an item of three plus three durability or six. And when I use the attack, I guess I could just use this attack, huh? Not discard the other one. Let's see if it talks about the multi. Combine it to form one single item without exceeding, in this case. Combine it, place at the bottom on the last position, making sure the lower part remains visible, effects and keywords. If the newly combined item card shares at least one keyword with the item the die is resting on, its durability is added. So it doesn't even have to share, it's just a share keyword. But if it does share, then you will... Uh, get extra durability. And it seems to give you the effects too. You can choose either effect. Effects and keywords. So that's pretty nice. Yes, yeah, so let's take this guy. And we'll craft him soon. And then we'll get rid of that. All right, so what I was what I was doing was climbing this mountain. That's why I like this token because it reminds me of what the hell I was trying to do a long time ago before I started the dumb journey. And since I got a I got two stars there, and I used my um, rope, I didn't have to. Uh, yeah, I just needed one star, so I got I got three stars total. I only need two stars. All right. Anyways, so let's draw 26 and discard this one. This goes away, and then 26 comes out. Finally, made it to the top of this rocky peak. The ocean stretches as far as the eye can see in every direction. This volcanic island is only about half a mile long, and from what you have seen, the resources look too scarce for you to survive here more than a few days. You notice the path to the south, apparently free of any jets of stream, constantly looking for an easier means of access. You carefully walk down, back down from the peak. Banish the train card you are standing on and replace it with the number 10. So this is the train I'm standing on. Move him out of the way. He gets banished and replace it with the 10. Now we got a new spot down here. And this just goes away. This is not docked. Hmm. 
was just looking to see if there's any goofy number around here. I don't see anything. Sometimes there's goofy numbers and you can get extra stuff. Right, so that disappears and then I go back on here. Right, so that's a new way and there's new fog. All right, so I might as well flip the fog. Weaver fish. Weaver fish is hiding in the muck, and you just happen to see it at the very last second. Beware of stepping on a shark poisonous dorsal spine. Okay, so you have to do this. Take zero or more, and you have to get one success. And if you get a success, nothing happens, and if you fail, then really bad stuff happens. So let's not do that. And if it's a curse, really, really bad stuff happens. So we absolutely need to succeed on this. So it is a look, which I don't think I have anything that helps me do that. Nope, not yet. So I must draw cards for success. So in order to guarantee a success, two cards to do it, three will definitely guarantee it. I'll just draw two. There we go, success. Nice. All right, so we got a camouflage outfit. What is that sneaking? What's that action? I haven't seen that action before. Oh, these are like really goofy actions. There it is. Be stealthy or hide. Or knowledge is power. And you get an experience card. All right, we'll take the knowledge of power, I suppose. Discard that one. And by sheer miracle, you avoid getting stung. Hooray. Make sure I'm doing this all correctly. Yep, these are all action cards. Should I throw anything incorrectly into that deck? All right, so then zero four comes out on this one. Progression in this direction is hampered by the many jets of boiling steam. It seems you have taken a steep path to reach the ocean that you can see below. So now it costs me nothing to uh, to move. The banish card used to cost one, which is nice. So I could move here or here. I've already done all this stuff. So I don't want to go swimming because that's nuts. Yeah, we'll go down. Okay, we're here. So now let's take a look at this, number 35. You find a moss carpeted hovel where you can get some rest and comfort away from the elements. Immediately after this revealed, one character involved maybe choose one card with the keyword stamina on the discard pile and then add it to their hand it sh or shuffle it back into the action deck. And this goes, I guess, here. Because it's got the action of look. One card with the from the disc in the discard pile, stamina. Probably none. Uh, 
Yeah, there's nothing. So if I sleep or if I heal, then I'll get this. If I'm here, looks like. All right, let's spend an action card to investigate this spot. That's a curse. And now we need eight. Gaze upon the wide, endless ocean, the surf is rough and choppy from the salty spray from the waves. It is enough to tell you that the water is freezing. Swimming away will certainly not be easy. On the other hand, if you stay here for more than a few days, you will likely die. So you need nine success and hit to draw three cards. And if you get it, you get number 23 plus some flag thing, which is some weird. Some weird symbol that I think it means to add. Do, 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 icons, flag. Let me add these numbers. You may add together the number associated with the pictograph in the banner and the number of, car of the card you are to take. It's weird. Nothing in the banner. I don't know. Maybe it's just maybe it's just number twenty three. I don't really know. Okay. Well, I'm not swimming anyway. It's crazy. All right. So let's flip this for free. Life jacket. You've laid your hands on a life jacket in poor condition. Nice. So if I fight with it, then I get three off, but I banish it. I guess it's iconic armor, I suppose. And it's got four durability. And it's a clothing and a skill. Do I have to choose to combine immediately? I forget how that works. What if item is found or crafted? The player may combine it with an existing item in their inventory and form a single item without exceeding the stacking limit. Alright. So I can choose to combine it. Rope plus light. Rope plus life jacket. Give me a seven durability thing, but the max is six. It really doesn't like you uh, having. Because there's a dumb. There is a grid snapping on. I don't know how to turn it off. Toggles lock. So this goes to seven or six, I mean. And I haven't used any of this crap. So this is still, so it's three. And this one's at six. Let's put it over there. All right, those two are combined. All right, 
Let's reveal number six. There's no smoke here, some moss, and even a few bamboo-like canes grow in this area. All right. So let's get over there by drawing two action cards. Making sure I built those things, yep. Obey. The following effect applies as long as you have this card in hand. During the cost step of an action you're involved with, if you have a card with the keyword monster in your hand, you may apply the following effect. Huh. Don't have any monsters. When this is in your inventory, the item that it is part of may contain up to three additional item cards. That sounds pretty good. Build a mega item. Okay, I got 26 there and 12 there. I always got to watch your life force in this game. All right, so let's take a look for one action. Number 12. Another curse. Take a look at number 12. Not that one, this one. That looks like a stack. It's not. From the few tracks you spot here on the ground, it seems that a small animal, a small animal, is here recently. You wait and hide in this in silence. Depending on the number of successes you obtain, the corresponding number of take the corresponding number of thirty cards. Reveal them. If at least one of the characters is bloody, you may discard one of these cards without the keyword predator. Blah, blah. Return the other... Return the other cards and go to the gold. All right. Ooh, there's a 14 right here. See that number right there? 14. And this is good from a number six. Which this is. You frighten a little crab and it scurries into a small hole hidden away among the weeds. So that changes this into this. Imagine this one gets banished. Okay, so now there is the number 16 spot. Now let's take a look at that. Search it for nothing. There's something there. Following the scampering crab, you notice a gleam at the entrance of the hole. You crouch down and reach the hole, reach into the hole and take the object. Found a small metal gear wheel at the layer of the crab. Nice. Second gear. Alright. And then there's another one. We can look at number 16 again. Which is this one. You insert your arm into the hole again, but find nothing worthwhile.
you notice the ground around the tunnel is loose and crumbling. You, you could easily dig it out and hide in there. Oh, that's a hunt action. I didn't realize. I thought it was like archery. Just hunt is better than I've been thinking about. So I have a bow, which is good at hunting. And I can do this, which is... I get seven successes on two cards. So I need to draw two action cards, and then I'll have to get at least two successes. And since I already have this one, I only need one success. And if I use the bow, it's another guaranteed success. And minus two. So I don't have to draw anything if I use the bow. And I get to draw one thirty card. Reveal them. If at least if at least one character is bloody, you must discard one of these cards without the keyword predator. Choose one of the remaining cards, which represents the results of your hunt. So as long as it's not bloody, then I'm good. If I get four to six results. So I could use the bow and try to get to four. So two more. The chance of getting two on two is pretty rare, I think. 45%. Or I could just use the bow and not really do anything. Just take a number 30 card. So I think I'll do that. I think I'll uh, do this action, hunt, draw two. Well, first I'll use the item. Rotation value to three. Because the first thing is items. Using item, then determine the cost. So it's zero. Then I said success. Um, I got two, so it's a success. And then if I have a skill, and then discard everything, and then choose one, and then discard, and then consequence. And then go back down. So I draw 130. Uh, it's not bloody. You spot a kind of large and gray red crab with a short, flat pincers. I do not really look like a threat. Stone eating crab. Take two number one cards. Nice. Oops. Start moving this crap to lock it. No. Rewind state. Right, lock this. Right, so this is this is a crab with food stamina. Set the rotation value to one. And I take this one and combine it there. So I have two of them. And this goes to value two. And that gets discarded.
So randomly take six cards if you have fire and shuffle them back for each food. Since this is a good hunting spot, let's hunt one more time. We'll set it to two. And draw another 30. So I don't have to do anything else. Take one card. One number one. It's the same thing. I'm going to combine it here. And this will go to three. Start up to four. Four food, I think. Yeah, four slots. Let's do it one more time. Since we want to have lots of food for this adventure, we'll still have one use of the bow left. So we'll take another number 30. No. It's a strange acelopod. A three foot long creature with tentacles and stumpy legs tries to bite you. You have to fight it with one, one, uh, one action to success and you can kill it. So fighting could use the conch and discard it. Don't really want to though. Could use the bow. And that will give me an extra success and free up an item slot, which is probably worthwhile. So let's wonder what happens if it uh, goes to zero. Lower the durability. Well, I can mark zero. It probably just means get rid of it when you're done. See, crafting an item. Using item. Yeah, discard any item that have a durability of zero. Alright. So we're going to use this bow, it's got a durability of zero, and that's for a fight action, which will give me minus two, and one success, and now I can draw one card for a chance to get one more success. And if I don't, then I'm going to get injured. Should have crafted this club. Just thinking about doing that. I think I'll rewind time just slightly and craft this club before I before I did the hunt action. So in order to craft the club, I need three. Just need to draw three stuff, and I'm on a space with bamboo. Right, I'm over here. Bamboo. 
could have done it for cheaper if I was over here. Eh, whatever. Okay, that's crafted. I'm going to combine it with the conch, which will bring me to a six. Six durability item it has these two effects, which is pretty sweet. And then I don't have to use the conch and discard it. I can just use this one to fight. And I should drag, grab one of these. And by doing, that might be good. Shovel might be good. Forbidden experiment. If a green grave can be seen, you may take the following action. It's alive, having cheating death. Randomly draw, take 25 cards and shuffle them back. Wow. It's only if you have a grave though, and I don't see any graves right now, so I'm not gonna take that one. So what kind of item is this, stamina? This is a stamina. Which is kind of weird. But it would give me a lot of uh, durability on my shovel. If I built it. And I'm going to go up here so I can build it pretty easy. So I'll take this one. Alright, so now I'm fighting this guy. Cheated slightly, but that's all right. So I'm fighting this guy, and let's see. I'll put this back at one to reset what I'm thinking about. All right, so I have this weapon. I will use my club and take him down to five. And that will give me two successes. And... Um, I think that means success on number, number seven. It's worth one success for each seven. Okay. All right, so I just have to draw one action card and he's dead. And it's a raft. Still get to go through all this crap, don't I? Yeah. So I still get to keep it if I want to. So when sleeping, if I build it, I don't think I'm gonna build it. It's too crazy. It takes too much energy to build that raft. All right, so this is dead. And then I kill the critter and take number two. I get some fish. Combine that here and bump this to four. And this goes in the past. All right. So we're at hunt again, number 30, I think it's depleted, isn't it? Yeah, 30 is depleted. Okay, let's walk up here. I'll take two action cards. Hunting. Fire making kit. That sounds pretty good. Because I certainly want to make a fire now. I 
19, 19 left. All right, so let's let's see. Probably should just start crafting some of the stuff so I don't run out of space. Let's craft this one. So I don't have the ingredients on me, so I need two action cards. Curse is nothing. And a splint. And that's a total of seven, but I have a seven limit, don't I? Or no, five. Um, but I can temporarily go up to seven, and then this will resolve because of the way the discard stuff is at the end. The consequence is I build this thing. But the question is, where do I put it? Guess I can put it here. On this thing. It's a stealth, so it doesn't help me anywhere, but... I'll put it there. Put it inside my life jacket. This inventory panel is just the worst. Because it doesn't line up. do that just delete that dumb panel yeah that's five one six four five Okay. And there's my six cards there. My six skill cards. Because I have a total of five plus the one limit right here. You may discard a will from your hand and choose one of your character specific cards and add it to your hand. So I could get rid of either of these two to choose. Obey. Or forbidden experiment. So if I come across a grave or whatever. All right. So that's made. I wonder if I can apply both effects at the same time, or like if I, because if I use this one, like I want to try to do this action here to build a fire, I need to draw two and zero success. Now, can I use this too, or do I have to double? Is it all automatic? I don't know. I don't understand it. Let me look at the dumb rules again. Yeah, it's six. Let's see, how about when using an item to talk about that? Do I sum or all of the item's effects? Huh. I'm going to assume it works. So I'm going to use this crazy item, which doesn't make any sense at all to be one item. I'm going to use 
use an item. I have to reduce it by one to use an item. Every time your friend is a skill card that enables you to craft. Who wants crafted? Oh, she too. We'll have to look at the exact rules of all this madness. It doesn't overly make sense. I'm just going to play the way I think it should work. So in order to do this action, I want to... Uh, I'll lower the durability of this, this chain. And then I'm going to do the craft create fire. And the create fire will... The rope will help me out, so I only need to draw one, and I'll get a get a success. But I don't need any. So for one action card, I can create fire. If I lower the durability to five, that's what I think it's gonna work. It's actually been a while, so I'm actually gonna save the game here. I'll actually go look at the fact offline, and uh, we'll be back. Thanks for watching. See you next time.